Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So we're going to continue the discussion on closing. So previously we have covered the month and close process. Please feel free to check out that video. If you have missed that, I'm going to put the link down below. And for this episode, we're going to review the year end close process. So as usual, I'm going to first lay out the business process. And then secondly, let's have a look in dynamics to see how system can automatically generate your beginning balance for the new fiscal year. All right, without further ado, let's get started. So let me share the PowerPoint. So from process perspective, it's very similar to month end, meaning that you will still need to first pre-close and complete all the preparation work. For example, post all journals, complete allocations. So that's very similar. And the second step, you also want to run your sub ledger and general ledger reconciliation and then generate the preliminary month end or year end financial statements, check the results, and finally change the period on hold. However, for year end, you do need to add one step in between, meaning that before you actually start the new fiscal year, you will want to generate a beginning balance entry for the new fiscal year and transfer the balance and PL. Right. So for that process, Dynamics can provide the batch job to help you automate that process. So before we get to the technical side, let's first clarify, what do you need to transfer from prior year to current year? So if you have accounting background, it may sound obvious, but maybe just for someone who is not familiar, when we talk about the balance transfer from prior year to current year or to the new fiscal year, actually there are two parts. One is on your balance sheet accounts. So those are your asset, equity, liability, et cetera. So those balance sheet accounts, typically needs to transfer to the new fiscal year with a one-to-one -one relationship, right? And then the second part will be your P&L account. So that's your expense revenue, which gives your net result of gain or loss of that previous fiscal year. And for this group of accounts, the common practice is you don't transfer one-to-one -to, -one to the new fiscal year because that's the past year results, but you do want to transfer the remaining into retained earning account for the new fiscal year. All right, so let's recap quickly. Balance sheet accounts, you need to transfer as is from the prior year to the new fiscal year. For p &L accounts, you want to include our expenses and revenue, all those accounts, the results will be aggregated or sum up and then transfer into one account called retained earning for the new fiscal year. So that's from business process perspective, how that transfer should happen. Now, let me switch to dynamics and show you how that will map out in the system. All right, so as discussed from the month end episode, all the closing related activities will happen in the general ledger. And then let me collapse all and you can open up this period close section. So for year end close, it's going to be through this menu. Okay, first thing, you can have as many year-end close batch jobs as needed, depending on the complexity and uh, organization hierarchy. So in this case, for example, this is a large entity and we have US companies, German companies, consolidation company. So I probably need to run the year-end for all those entities, right? So I group those by US, Germany. And now let's talk about why we need to group those. So the first step is typically you need to define your year end close template. Here is the option year end close template setup. So the purpose of this template is basically to group all the key features, which will not change every time we run the year end process. So let's take an example. If I go with this US companies and click here year end close template. So first you can see for all those US companies, they are sharing the same fiscal calendar. And then here are the list of all legal entities having the same retainer earning accounts. Then you can also have different accounts if they're not sharing the same chart of account, that's okay. But the key thing is if you want to share the same year end close template, they have to follow the same fiscal calendar, right? And also you want to make sure down below there are some common features for balance sheet, financial dimensions, profit and loss financial dimensions, and you can handle that for each entity within this US companies group. So let me explain this. What are these financial dimensions? Again, as we explained previously, the balance sheet financial dimensions are targeting our balance sheet accounts. So typically this is asking you, when I transfer the balance from prior year to current year, do you want to include the financial dimensions from the prior year, right? And currently you can see this toggle is enabled because this is best practice. 
meaning that balance sheet account is typically one to one when you transfer, right? And it doesn't hurt to transfer that financial dimension as well for your new year analysis. So when I run the trial balance for the new fiscal year, I will be able to check through that voucher, okay, this transaction is from my prior year and here are associated financial dimensions. So it's helpful. Now moving down to this PL financial dimensions. So it's the same ask. The system wants to know when you transfer a PL account, do you want to keep financial dimensions? Now the best practice is we do not want to transfer the financial dimensions because as we discussed, all the PL accounts will be posted to one single retained earning for the new fiscal year. And if you transfer multiple financial dimensions, depending on the number of combinations, the system will have multiple retained earning lines together associated to that financial dimension combination. So that means when you run your trial balance for the new fiscal year, likely you're going to see hundreds of thousands of records of that retained earning account with different financial dimension combination. So probably that's going to be messy for your new fiscal year analysis. But now the question may be, okay, if we don't transfer, how can I track the prior year financial dimensions? Well, the answer is you can always go back to run the prior year trial balance and then analyze for that PL accounts from the prior year. Okay, so with that, how should we set it up? And there is profit and loss financial dimensions. For each financial dimension, you can select this close single option and leave this blank. So this is the technical trick. If you need to understand more, what are the options, how to play with those filters, feel free to check the Microsoft Online that learning document. They really document in details how to set those up. But in our case, just choose close single, leave it blank. Or you can also say, close single in case you want to transfer to a specific financial dimension or only want to transfer the financial dimension for a specific combination, you can also define here. All right. So with that, we have completed this year end close template. Just one side note, as I mentioned, remember this balance sheet dimension and PNL dimensions. This is defined per company, meaning that now we're selecting this USMF. We have defined this way, but if I select USRT, you can see this is following another structure. So you have to redo it again if it's the same. But that also gives you flexibility in case multiple entities will follow different financial dimension transfer rules. So this is very powerful. And with that, we have completed this template. Let me go back. Now that means on every year and run, I don't need to manually select my return earning account, what's my fiscal calendar year for which company, because everything can be done through that template. All you need to do is you can either validate a year and close first. This serves as the simulate posting at the GL level, for example, basically give you a pre-check to see if all your year end close criteria are matched if you have any pending transactions or if all the account structures are active or this type of control, right? If you want to do for USMF, you select this and then select the fiscal year you want to close. For example, if I want to do for 2025 and then validate, the system is going to give you a message to say, okay, successfully passed or with any issues. So this is an optional step. Now, the next one, once you are ready, it's going to run this year end close. Again, you can select one run for all the entities through batch job, or you can also say, I only want to run for USMF. Then you just check this box and let's do okay. So I will just do this for an example. So from this closing parameter, the system is already applying all the pre-configurations from the template. Now you just need to define which fiscal year you want to close. So in our case, I want to do 2025. And then voucher, this is a free tax field, meaning that once you enter a format, all the closing or opening balance vouchers will carry this number sequence or this format. That's to facilitate your analysis through a trial balance. So in my case, I want to do full year 2025 or fiscal year 2025, and you can do batch processing and again, you can personalize this voucher format based on the company needs. Okay, and from here I can do okay. Oh, now we get an error message to say there's no fiscal year within the fiscal calendar. This is probably because of um, the testing environment. If I want to do 2017, and let's do the voucher for year 2017, let's see if that works. So I'm going to generate the transaction. 
Perfect. So now the run physical batch job is added. We just need to refresh and it's going to show up here as a record to say now you have a year and close entry generated. So a few things I want to highlight here. Number one, you can run as many times as needed. Let's say you have run a year and close. And then after that, you realize, oh, we have some adjustments to be done and we just do some GL entries again in the system. Now you need to rerun that process again. So no worries. You can definitely reverse the prior run and then run this year and close one more time. And the system is going to override the transactions or the postings it generated from the prior run. So this is very helpful. Actually, this is a configuration point you can control if you want to keep the journal posting from prior run or you want to overwrite. So while we're waiting, let me show you from another tab. So it's actually from the uh, general ledger parameters. OK, so I will go to general ledger and then let's see under ledger setup, general ledger parameters. There's a section for closing purposes. OK, when I scroll down below, you see fiscal year end. And actually here, delete existing year-end entries when reclosing the year. So this is the controlling point. Now I enable this option. That means every time when I rerun, it's going to override or delete the transactions posted from prior run. Okay. And there are some other important configuration points here. For example, create closing transactions during transfer. So basically this option is going to create two sets of posting. One is for your beginning balance entry and the other one is going to be your closing entries. So the end result doesn't change. It will always transfer your balance to the new year, bring you prior year balance down to zero. But the difference is you will have traceability to find out those closing entries posted to the prior year end, right? So you can enable this option if needed. This is more for audit or traceability purposes. So now let's go back to the prior screen and let me refresh. So you see now we have this record created for USMF. The fiscal year is 2017 and it's following the voucher I defined. So when I click this, it's going to bring me to the journal entries that have been posted to the new fiscal year because the date you can see is posted to 1-1-2018. At the same time, it's going to bring the prior year balance down to zero. And now I scroll a little bit. Let's check the account combination. So we say for balance sheet account, it's going to follow the same account together with the financial dimension. So that's what you see for the new fiscal year. We do see the financial dimension combination being transferred to those balance sheet accounts, right? And the other feature we talked about, for example, if you need to generate two sets of entries, one for closing, one for opening, then what you're going to see is here from this um, posting type column, for those closing entries, you're going to see something fill in here saying this is the closing entry. And when you export this, you can find out there are two set of postings, one for closing, one for the new year posting. So that's the main difference, right? But it doesn't change the end results, okay? And again, if you have any posting layer involved, it's going to be run for all the posting layers. So with that, I'm going to go back. And if you want to reverse, you can directly click here, reverse the year end and rerun it again. And typically you can check this box to see all the previous reversal, but there's no point checking the previous reversal if you set to override the previous posting. Okay, now, having said that, we can go back to our trial balance just to see the end result. So what we expect to see is for the closed fiscal year, we want to see the balance down to zero. And then for the new fiscal year, we want to see the first day with the balance being transferred. So let's check that out. I will go back to my um, general ledger and run a trial balance under inquiries and report. I'll open up this trial balance. Okay, so first I want to check for the beginning balance. So we closed the 2017. So now the first day of the new fiscal year is 1-1-2018. So I put the from date to date to the same date and then I filter on this financial dimension set to see only the main accounts. Posting layer will be current and then I can do calculated balances. 
So the expectation here is to see we have zero transactions, but we do see the opening balance happening here. So for the new fiscal year first, you can see we have all the opening balance being transferred for the balance sheet account. Same thing for the returned earning, which will contain all your PL from prior fiscal year. So with that, let's continue to scroll down below. And from the total perspective, you can see clearly we have zero debit, zero credit, because that's the first day of the fiscal year. We don't have any transactions yet, and the current balance is zero. But what is important is you do have all those opening balance being put in here with the closing balance with the same amount. All right, so this is validated. Now, the other check we can do is to run for the prior year, the last day. So that means 12-31-2017. And I'll copy this to here to date as well. And then let's run the calculate balances. So the expectation for the last day of the prior fiscal year is we have the balance down to zero because we close that out, right? And you expect to have the debit and credit being balanced out. So now you can see from debit and credit totals here, we have a total debit, total credit being balanced out, and the total balance now is zero. So all the transfer has happened correctly. All right, and if you want to check the financial dimensions, you can also play with the filter here. Just use the same from date to date, and then check this financial dimension set to include the financial dimensions. That way you can check if your returned earnings account has any financial dimensions or not. Typically, from our configuration point, you want to see the balance sheet accounts with financial dimension, but the retained earning account has only one single account for the first day of the new fiscal year. All right, that's all I want to cover for today. Hopefully, this is helpful. Feel free to comment down below, like, and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.